these issues are tied together. We have had a fabulous democracy spring hey, mobilization with labor unity, with so young people, here, with elders, sure racial justice, so that, uh, and today the struggle continues, but this is bringing it to further power and national attention. Can you tell us a little bit about your history and like some of the organizing you've done in the past um, with uh, SDS and things like that? I came into organizing in the civil rights movement in 1964. I was in Mississippi with the Freedom Summer Project, and many of you heard about that because it would gain notoriety tragically when the three young men, Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney, were killed while they were supporting the rights of poor black people in Mississippi. What you may not know is while they were looking for the bodies of those three young men, they found the bodies of eight other black men whose hands were bound or feet chopped off and whose murders were never even investigated. That's how little black lives mattered in Mississippi. But because people organized, within a year we had a Voting Rights Act. And now Mississippi has more African-American elected officials than any other state in the country. Wow. When we organize, we will win. It's just a question of when. If we continue to organize, I moved from civil rights, combining that with the women's movement, the movement against the war in Vietnam. I met my husband at the first sit-in against the war in Vietnam. Then labor organizing and a training center I created with money I won from a back pay suit called Midwest Academy. It trains organizers at midwestacademy.com. You should sign up if you want to learn more about organizing. And now I run large-scale or help support large-scale issue campaigns. I ran the campaign for financial reform. We have a lot further to go, but we make progress when we organize. We now have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. I had organized action around the Supreme Court decision on uh, marriage equality and the AFL-CIO's health care campaign and many other things. And now I'm here standing with Democracy Spring, Democracy Awakening, ready for democracy, people in, money out, and democracy rising. You mentioned going to Mississippi at a time when you must have known you were risking your life. Three people were killed, you mentioned. Two of them were white, right? They were killing anybody who's getting in the way of white supremacy. Reverend Barber said to me in an interview recently, the civil rights movement, it didn't end, it was murdered. When the other side is willing to kill, that can set you back a little bit. So I wonder if you can speak to how it felt when by the end of the 60s they had basically not just killed the leaders, but they had killed so many of your organizers that people were losing, losing their nerve in the face of tyranny. In the 60s, there were many people who were willing to die for the cause of freedom and democracy. And tragically, many have died. Right now, I think the challenge is, are you willing to live for democracy and freedom and justice? Will you live and do the daily work that often can be boring or too hard or I'm not sure about myself. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's too confusing. But if we commit to that organizing every day, we will win. We've made progress. We have much further to go. But we do make progress when we organize. To all those watching, come join us. Many of you, I know, are already part of this.